Welcome to In a Heartbeat, coming to you from the studio of WMTV Channel 5 in Gross Point Farms at the Gross Point War Memorial. We are broadcast now throughout southeastern Michigan on AT&T UVerse on Channel 99. I'm Dr. David Bali, and I'm your host for In a Heartbeat. Sometimes we can't help but follow our destiny in life. And I think that situation is perhaps never more true than with my very special guest today. He is a physician who has dedicated his professional career to the study, research, and treatment of osteoporosis, a disease which affects our skeletal system and our spine. And his name is Dr. Henry Bone. Dr. Bone, a warm welcome to In a Heartbeat. Dr. Bowley, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for the invitation. Uh, the pleasure is mine, and I'm really excited about all the things that you'll be able to share with our viewers today, and you have such a wealth of information, and uh, I'm just going to get started by maybe just giving our viewers a little bit of your background. <clears throat> you were uh, an undergraduate at Princeton University. That's right. And uh, that's wonderful. I, I feel belittled in your presence. Fui. Fui. <laughs> <laughs> and you went to me medical school at the University of Washington in Seattle. That's right. And you were both an intern and an internal medicine resident at Parkland Memorial Hospital in Dallas. That's right. And uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I always associate that where uh, President Kennedy was taken when he was assassinated. Well, it was fortunate that that was uh, one of the leading trauma centers in the country, so there was never any question about the quality of care. It was too bad that the situation was irreparable when he was uh, seen at the hospital, of course. Yes, yes. And I just want to mention a few other things uh, that our viewers know some of your background. Um, uh, you are an adjunct professor in the Division of Metabolism, Endocrinology, and Diabetes in the Department of Medicine at the University of Michigan. That's right. You are director of the Michigan Bin Bone and Mineral Clinic. You are chief in the section of Endocrinology and Metabolism at St. John Hospital and Medical Center. And you are on consulting staff in, at Beaumont Gross Point. You are also president of the Michigan Consortium of, uh, for osteoporosis, and uh, you have been previously chairman of the FDA Advisory Committee. That's all right. So, and I know there are many other things, but I could spend all our time talking about your accomplishments and uh, credentials. That wouldn't be very interesting <laughs> for anyone here, I'm sure. But uh, maybe you could start out, some of our viewers may not know, tell me a little bit about your practice and, and your specialty. Well, I'm trained in endocrinology uh, as a subspecialty of internal medicine, but within that broader field have focused on mineral metabolism and bone disorders of which osteoporosis is by far the most common. We also treat Paget's disease, fibrous dysplasia of bone, and some other bone conditions that are less common. Is there anything that you can think of as you were looking to your career in medicine that, that led you in this direction? Is there anything that sparked your interest? Oh, I just had an interest in uh, mineral metabolism uh, starting when I was a medical student, and uh, this just kind of carried through. Excellent, excellent. For our viewers, maybe you could explain what is osteoporosis and how, how does that differ from a term called osteopenia? Well, that's a great question because it, it uh, causes some confusion. Osteoporosis really con refers to a condition in which there's loss of mass or substance in the bone, as well as some breakdown of the internal structure of the bone, and this results in fragility, so that the bone fractures more easily than it otherwise might. Uh, osteopenia is a term we're kind of getting away from. It's not quite as politically correct as it used to be, mm -hmm. but it's, you hear it widely. Uh, it just refers to a lower than average bone density in comparison with the young adult reference range. And it can be a signal that attention should be paid, but by itself we don't consider it a disease state. It, it, it does have a specific diagnostic uh, term and number so that uh, we can investigate it and see if more needs to be said about that or anything needs to be done. Dr. Bone, can 
We know that women are prone to and can develop osteoporosis. Can men develop that as well? Certainly men can develop osteoporosis. Uh, osteoporosis is really just a description of what the bone structure is like. So you can have a juvenile a form of osteoporosis which, osteoporosis, which fortunately is quite rare. By far the most common situation is postmenopausal osteoporosis that's caused by the changes due to lack of estrogen after the menopause. Uh, men can develop uh, osteoporosis, particularly if they um, have low testosterone levels, per, for example, uh, in the course of treatment for prostate cancer. But men or women can have osteoporosis uh, as a result of exposure to excessive levels of uh, prednisone or similar medications. They might be very important for treatment of a, of a major disease, but it, it's something that we have to take into account and manage. Fortunately, just about any kind of osteoporosis is uh, something that we can uh, manage and uh, help the patient, but we need to identify the patient who has it. Uh, just, I'm just thinking as you're uh, speaking, does osteoporosis have any relationship to the issue that we tend to get shorter as we get older? Well, several things contribute to decreased height in a person who's getting older. One is that the discs between the vertebrae uh, tend to thin. So people tend to lose height because of loss of disc space between the vertebrae, and that is not osteoporosis. The discs are not the bones, and osteoporosis could cause a loss of height if we see a partial a collapse or shortening of the vertebrae of somebody uh, lifts something that's too heavy for that uh, osteoporotic vertebra. But many people have osteoporosis who haven't had a fracture. And actually the majority of people who have uh, somewhat stooped or bent posture have it for other reasons besides osteoporosis. As we delve into this a little bit further, and we'll talk about the different aspects of it, is there anything that can be done to prevent osteoporosis? Well, the first and most important thing is to choose your parents carefully <laughs> because uh, uh, there is a very important hereditary component to osteoporosis. Most of the average person's bone is built up during uh, childhood and adolescence into very early adult life, uh, early 20s. So a uh, good intake of calcium and vitamin D and a good amount of exercise is actually very important in getting the best development of peak bone mass that an individual can within his or her genetic structure. And that's the number one thing we can do for early prevention is to, to build a strong skeleton. And then... I'm just thinking of one thing as you're, as you're speaking, Dr. Bone. You know, so many of our younger people today are in front of computers and texting and are perhaps less active when growing up. Uh, do you, foresee that as a potential issue? Oh, there's a lot of concern about that, not only from the standpoint of skeletal development, but muscle strength, uh, childhood obesity is epidemic, uh, and we're seeing more and more uh, diabetes in, uh, younger, in youngsters than ever before. So this is um, a major issue, the activity level and proper diet in uh, children and adolescents. And of course, that carries forward into adulthood. Uh, the, the habits that people develop as youngsters uh, undoubtedly influence their uh, lifestyle later on. And uh, maintaining a good uh, calcium and vitamin D intake, especially vitamin D if we live in Michigan, and maintaining a good level of physical activity throughout adult life is very important. And, and Expounding further upon that, um, uh, strength training exercise with weights is important throughout our life in terms of maintaining our bone health, isn't it? It can help. It's not as, um, as critical as some people have made it out to be, but it's very <laughs> useful. Uh, when we speak about weight-bearing exercise, we're really talking about gravity. We're talking about walking as opposed to recumbent exercise or just sitting on the couch, <laughs> which is, you know, and exercising our thumbs with a, a, a game. But the uh, appropriate amount of uh, strengthening 
exercises uh, is very useful, not just because of the um, effect on, a, on the bones themselves, but because muscle strength is critically important in preventing falls. And this is why uh, uh, appropriate exercise is especially important as we get older. There is a tendency to lose muscle mass as we age. And this can be uh, offset to a considerable extent by uh, proper diet and exercise. So keeping that strength up is critical in preventing falls. In fact, one of the things that vitamin D does that people don't realize is help maintain muscle strength. And patients with low vitamin D in part have an increased risk of fracture because of an increased risk of a bad fall. So there are the, the, the whole concept of maintaining a good inputs and good exercise is something that's a really lifelong, should, uh, it should go from uh, cradle to grave, and we hope that's a very long time. Yes, we do, yes, we do. We'll talk a little bit more about vitamin D a little bit later, and I want to maybe ask you a question. Um, many of our viewers may have heard of something called a bone density test. Maybe you could explain briefly what is a bone density test and who should get it. The most useful and informative type of bone density test is performed with a special uh, instrument uh, called a dual energy x-ray absorptiometer or DXA, which everybody calls DEXA for short. And it uh, involves a, a really negligible radiation exposure. The amount of x-ray exposure is comparable to the amount of uh, radiation you get from just walking around for a day or two. That's not bad. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's trivial compared to the, uh, uh, just the environmental exposure to uh, solar rays and so on. So ideally you want a, this very specific device with these very specific uh, indications. Yes, it, the uh, quality of the work can make a big difference in how uh, precise and accurate this is. Uh, it, so it's important that the uh, technologist is properly trained and that the uh, doctor who interprets the test is uh, experienced and, and uh, knowledgeable about bone densitometry in order to get uh, consistent reproducible results. But it can give uh, some of the most precise results in medicine in terms of the variability uh, from one test to the next is just a few percent in, in good hands. And this uh, test will tell how much calcium is the, in the bone in relation to the size of the bone. And this uh, gives a good indication of bone strength. Uh, 